you had a former SEC quarterback. Uh, yes, sir. Greg on, McElroy. One Greg McElroy. One Greg McElroy on the show ESPN today. ESPN College Football XFL analyst. Talk yeah. a little XFL. Enlighten yeah. us a little bit about um, the conversation you had so with, with old believe Greg. Believe it or not, I mean, and, and obviously he's speaking with the Memphis Touchdown Club um, as we record here, but I – I sort of asked him about Memphis, and he he went on and on. And some people will say, well, he's speaking to his audience, yada, yada, yada. But he went on and on about how football-crazed Memphis is and why the Big 12, their market or their their conference could use a market like Memphis, Um, somewhat of a southern footprint, Uh, if you you had that, he basically said something about if you have a Power 5 banner up over Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium, the amount of turnout, the amount of people that would latch onto the program is pretty substantial. And, like, obviously I agree, right? Obviously I agree. But to hear a guy from Bama, or, well, obviously he was from the West Coast originally, played high school football in Texas, like – he has, I mean, went to went to Bama. Like right. he knows Pac-12, he knows the Big 12, he knows the he knows SEC. Yeah. SEC. He knows everything. But to hear a guy with that type of wealth of football knowledge of how conferences go about choosing markets and everything else, I thought that was that was striking to me for him to say the Big 12 should look at that Memphis market pretty damn favorably. Yeah, there's a couple of different directions we could probably go to talk about this, but there's something that you said that as soon as you mentioned him talking about the Big 12 is where my where my thought process went. You and I had a conversation on your show a few weeks ago about uh, conference realignment and stuff like that, and to me, you said if Memphis had a Power 5 banner at the stadium, it was obviously a Power 5 school at that point, what would the landscape of Memphis football look like? I think it would be a just a, an unbelievable difference almost I mean, overnight <laughs> to go from that. And, and, and that seems, I don't want to say shallow, but it does seem kind of shallow. So, but, it, but it makes sense. I'm not, I'm not crapping on Memphis fans of that. It makes sense that when you are up there with the big boys, okay, now, you know, some of those allegiances that are like this, you know, some people are just – for, you know, fans of different teams to be fans of different teams live in this. Then those people were like, "Oh, we're playing. Who we're playing this? T- we're playing these big time teams every year. I'm going every week, and I'm wearing well, blue, and I'm repping a, no, the team." Like, think about think about the turnouts for Power Five opponents over the years. Right. You look at that Mississippi State game, forty five, forty six thousand. Ole Miss, we got upwards of fifty eight thousand. Yeah. Um, it, like the lowest attendance was probably the one in twenty nineteen. Right, the old Miss game. Yeah, the old the Miss season game. opener. Yeah, the season opener that was a really ugly game, but Tigers ended up winning. That was probably fifty thousand. Yeah, I think plus. it was still high. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, you go back like my people forget this, and this makes me laugh that people forget this. Duke, Duke in twenty thirteen. Kenny, you may remember this. Duke in twenty thirteen comes to the Liberty Bowl. Guess how many fans? Forty three thousand for Duke. For Duke, and they weren't even—they're not a good football program no. historically. But when the power conference teams come to the Liberty Bowl, it's forty thousand plus every single week. So, like, if Texas Tech came in town, if Baylor Iowa came State. in town, you'd fill it out. It would look very legitimate. Yeah. Now, I still think you need to make the upgrades that are necessary to. Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. You yeah. need to make sure you do that. But they're in the process of, of getting that done. They have uh, $350 million worth of funds the state has provided on a $650 million project. That is seemingly going to get done. If you talk to people behind the scenes, they, you know the Grizzlies are willing to let the university take the funds to do that project more than they're willing to help out the Redbirds or 901 FC. Yeah. So it's going to be a split between FedEx Forum and and Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. So I, I'm just all I've always been of the belief you bring a power conference team in here every single week, you're going to get results from a uh, uh, attendance standpoint and you're going to boost that money up. It, it, yeah. it'll, it, it, they'd fit in. I really do believe that. And even as a basketball school, right. I mean, right. a lot of history basketball was. Yeah, I, I love the, th- I just love to think about it, you know, because. As someone who played for the university and has, you know, been in the media since you left school, someone who went to the university, covered the team since I was a junior in college, it's just like we've seen those big atmosphere games. Obviously, you've been on the field for some of them, um, but just covering UCLA, I forgot was it was fifty right, fifty thousand right. people in the stands. 
That was season opener too. Yeah, right? yeah. Yep. Um, and a win, by the way. Right. Tim Hart picks usually six. wins. Yeah. By the way, usually, in all these games usually. I'm talking about. But seeing some of those games and being in some of those big games, like SMU game, I know it wasn't a Power Five school, but still, like the coolest atmosphere. That was better than Ole Miss atmosphere, right. and I'll admit the that. coolest atmosphere that's ever been for a University of Memphis football game, uh, the Mississippi State games, Ole Miss games. Like, there's been all those Power Five games that you mentioned have been what football, what a lot of us believe football in Memphis should be. And has the potential to be because we've seen it with our yes. own eyes. Like we've seen it in these games. And so I just I just feel like if they were in that situation, if they were in one of these power five conferences, they were playing name brand teams, they were playing guys that were competing for Heisman trophies and just overall uh, awards in college football and competing for college football playoffs and stuff like that. It, we would we wouldn't even know what to do as far as the football program goes. I just feel like the attendance, the amount of money, the amount of boosters, the amount of highly ranked players that would come in because of that would literally turn this city on their head because no one, I'm going to say no one, there are people that expect it, but from a common fan perspective, you wouldn't expect something like that to turn everything on its axis, and that's exactly what I believe would happen if yes, Memphis got into a power 100%. five conference. and like... Uh, something that that Greg was talking about when I was talking to him on the on the show today, he was talking about the allegiances of the of the SEC in general. Um, but I don't know about you, like in this area, talking about the SEC, yeah. like Arkansas. It's like a melting pot, right. if you will. Um, but one thing I don't know about you, but if I'm in the city talking to folks and just around town, most people are really diehard Memphis folks. Yeah, like people really ride behind Memphis, and like you could even look at the basketball. Uh, the basketball fan base, like a lot of those same people would support a, a really good football program. And you've program talked and to a, a lot of conference. those people. And here's the thing is like, I, I just, I look at the fact that you can look at this Memphis basketball program. They can fill out an 18,000 seat pro arena. Yeah. There is upside in this damn market. I don't care if it's 51st or 52nd in TV and media, whatever the hell it is. It's, it's there. The potential it's, is there. It's big enough. The potential is right there for it. Uh, I, I think the, especially once you get these upgrades to the stadium, you'll, you'll have the infrastructure to go make it happen and it, it, for it to look good. I, I just don't know what's. I don't. I don't see the holdup. Like you talk to most people around the country, there's no. Unless they have some rivalry with Memphis, you know, whether it's like Louisville or Houston or UCF, right. unless it's like fans of, of them. You talk to like some of the big people in media that, that understand the footprint and, and how people react in Memphis to, to good sports, they, they realize it should be a power five too. Like you yeah. hear the same answer every single time. I talked with Paul Feinbaum two months ago. He said the same damn thing. It's it, it's a frustrating feeling though because now you when you put it in the – in the same conversation, sort of the same time period where we're in, where they're talking about UConn to the Big 12 or damn Gonzaga right. or Fresno State to the Pac-12. It's like... Well, how is this happening? Yes. Yeah, like, how why, is this happening? Why SMU to the Pac-12. And I get them. They have deep pockets there in Dallas, yeah. but they're like way down the list in Dallas. Right. Of things of universities of to support. Priority and money. But um, you, you look at all these other names of these schools that are that are being thrown around and Memphis is sort of being thrown to the wayside and you're like, what the hell is going it on? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. It doesn't make any remote sense. Yeah, especially when you look at, and I know basketball does not sell like football even remotely close when it comes to the NCAA. Football is king, will always be king. But when you look at the success of both programs, and, and this has become a trend in college athletics lately with both program both major programs basketball and football succeeding something that we've never really seen before be prevalent but when you look at the landscape over the last maybe five to seven years the majority of the teams that are good in football are good in basketball too it's because athletic directors presidents are obviously making good hires making the right calls getting the right coaches in there and they have enough money yes <laughs> money to get it to these players in both football and basketball. Alabama was garbage at basketball at one point, and now you see them as a perennial top yep. contender. And they're so – I mean, Ohio State's usually good at both. Yep. You just go down the list. Most teams that are good in football are also good in basketball, and there, there's a correlation to that. And we see that in Memphis, but they don't get the same amount of love as some of these other schools 